Flatten Proud Crowd, welcome back to another video. We are headed down the road here, actually almost to the custom interior shop where the 7.3 is getting a whole bunch of custom interior stuff done. We will go over the interior, what all was done, and why we went with what we did. So stay tuned guys, hopefully this thing turned out super great. Very, very satisfied with the interior on this truck. And real quick explanation as to why the truck was dead. The doors were probably open for a while doing an install. The batteries got weak. You know how that goes, but uh, all good now, and it's got about a 35-minute drive home, so should uh, should uh, get those batteries nice and charged up again. However, the interior on the truck turned out really, really good. I'm super satisfied with it. I'll go over the entire interior on the truck as soon as we get back to the house, but uh, I think you guys are gonna like it. It's it's pretty awesome. Now, it's not quite what we were going to go with originally, but it does look really, really good. So we're here with the truck. I'm gonna show you the full reveal right now on the interior, and then we've got. Got a couple other things I want to talk about, so well, let's get to showing you guys the interior right now. So we're in the truck right now and I want to go over why we went with what we did and kind of like the thought process behind it. So let's get into that. If you look at these seats, these are perforated leather inserts top to bottom with French stitching all around the seams on the outer side and down this side here that you're going to see. Not in the middle here so much just because, well, it's not going to get as much wear and tear on the inner part of the seat. So it doesn't need to be as heavy duty. This is solid stuff. This is not cheap stuff. The whole seats are done right and they're done very, very nicely. If you look at the back, obviously in the O1s, they didn't have the headrests on the heavy duty trucks. Got the flip down center cup holder and armrest situation there and that is fully wrapped as well. Everything is in very, very good shape. Looks very, very good. And the reason for the black is it ties in with like the black accent panels, the black radio, the black wheel, the black part of the inner part of the dash, the black tuner display screen here, as well as some other things. And the reason we went with the gray stitching, if you look at the stitching, it's all gray. That matches the dash, the door panels, all that other stuff, and I felt it was very fitting. We did do the center armrest as well. That is all black. This is all black. I mean, everything looks really, really good. This it was leather wrapped black, and he said that he used a leather dye, and he actually dyed this portion here just because it, it would have been a pain in the butt to wrap. This is kind of like a fake leather... Um, soft plastic-ish type of molding on top here. Not this portion, just this portion. So he said it's really hard to uh, do leather or any vinyl leather or anything. That's why they did it this way from the factory. Otherwise they would have done the whole thing for the whole center console here. So he said he just heated like a, a die to kind of match it too. So it made sense. Nice feeling leather. I mean, it's very nice, very soft. And these seats were already in great shape as it is. They weren't really wore down. They weren't you know, all nasty, they weren't beat up. They were actually in very, very good shape. And so he really didn't have to do a whole lot with the cushioning. Like the second gen Longhorn, that truck had wore down interior. The seats were tore up and stuff like that. So he redid all the insulation and everything. So essentially that truck, just the front bench cost more than this entire interior because he needed to redo all the you know, cushioning in the seats and everything to where this one had such a little wear and tear. It's almost like only the driver's seat was really ever used where he didn't really have to do much anything other than leather wrap the entire interior. It actually turned out really nice. And I hope you guys understand, you know, in terms of like this interior, why I went with the black. First off, it just makes sense with the truck. Truck's black. And you know, we got some wheels and tires to show you guys here and probably the next upload. Just a lot of things about this interior just makes sense to go this route. So that's why we did. Why I didn't do the diamond stitch pattern? There's not really a huge reason other than the fact that I wanted the truck back in two weeks. I didn't want the truck back in a month. And so, you know, when I dropped this off, he had it done within, I think, eight days. I just couldn't pick it up because I was out of town with my wife on a little getaway trip. So I still wanted my trip and then I came back and then picked up the truck, but it was four days done already before today. I mean, it was just nuts. I mean, he got that thing done. If you're wondering who the guy is that does this interior, it is Custom Interiors by Thomas. He's in Garrett, Indiana. So if you want to type that in or just type in leather upholstery, Garrett, Indiana, or Custom Interiors by Thomas, 
Garrett, Indiana. You'll find out where he's at, who he is. It's not a bad deal to get a really good deal on very, very nicely well done leather interior. If you're wondering what it costs to do this truck, all the seats, and that is if your truck seats are not ripped up and he's just doing leather upholstery work over top of the factory cushioning, this whole interior cost me only $2,150. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, and for the most part, it is, but for a full leather interior, you can't go buy all new leather seats for this truck. Like if you found King Ranch seats or, you know, Lariat seats, it would be hard to find front and back ones in perfect condition for two grand. You're going to be really hard pressed to find that. Let's get on to the next part of this video and I'm going to explain something to you that some of you might be kind of surprised by, me as well, and some of you might be very understanding and might make a lot of sense to you. When I was talking about why it's so much more worth it to me to do the leather interior for like 2000 bucks, give or take, versus just buying used old seats. Because if you've got a truck that has seats that have been in there for 200,000 miles on eBay, let's say, but they're black leather, they're lariat seats or whatever, or gray leather, tan leather, whatever, um, that's cool. But you have to think about it. You're not gonna have brand new stitching and brand new leather in your seat. So most of the time they're gonna be like smashed down, crinkled up and wore out, which is fine if you're into that, but you're gonna spend just as much, maybe even more and you're gonna have seats that have already been wore down quite a bit. Now for the topic that some of you might love and some of you might hate, and I was debating actually keeping this truck for my own personal vehicle. The wife and I got to talking a lot more and thinking through some stuff and planning and all this other stuff, and um, we're thinking about selling the truck. In fact, it's listed for sale right now. So we're in the shop here with the second gen Longhorn, which really quick, let me show you guys something. This truck here, if you want this truck, tomorrow is your final day. This is your last 24 hours to enter to win this truck, and then it's gone, it's done. You can't win this five-speed Longhorn with $5,000 cash ever again by tomorrow at midnight. So if you want to enter, every $5 is 10 entry to win. It's this simple. You go to the store, you select your favorite item or multiple items, and every $5 that you spent on the store will get you 10 tickets slash entries into the drawing with the name and email and phone number you use to place the order. That information is submitted multiple times for your entries towards winning this truck. So if you want to get in, you're running out of time, last chance to get in, and then this will be gone. So you're probably wondering, well, explain to me what you mean by you're selling the fourth gen. You haven't sold a truck in a long time. I haven't sold a vehicle since, wow, um, since my first diesel I ever bought. And you're probably gonna want the explanation as to why you're selling it. So, of course, many of you guys know, if you don't know, then you must not have been following the channel very long. Reagan and I are having a baby. And so, we were talking when we were out of town on our trip, and we were going back and forth, and we're like, you know, what's gonna be the best thing for us as a vehicle? You know, and I brought it up, and she's like, you know, why, why are you asking me this? Like, you know, like, I love my trucks, like I just wanna drive a truck. I said, I know. I said, and I understand that, but I said, here's the thing. We travel a lot as it is, right? Almost every weekend or every other weekend, we're driving somewhere, a couple hours. With a pickup truck, when we have a baby in a car seat and a dog that we travel with, that's gonna be a 100 pound dog, mind you, plus luggage. I said, now the luggage thing, I'm not that worried about. We could throw a ton of cover on the truck and throw the, you know, throw our luggage in the bed of the truck. That's not a big deal. Even if we did do that with a car seat and a hundred pound dog in the back of a truck is just kind of a lot. And then when it comes to the day to day of her having to put that car seat in, yes, they're heavy. You know, So I'm just thinking about like when Reagan's running errands and she's doing stuff, I'm thinking like she's gonna get tired of lifting this thing up because her truck's lower right now on the stocks. But when she does, you know, put the bigger mud tires back on the thing and it's leveled out and it's a big truck, I'm like, She's gonna have to lift that thing all the way up into there multiple times a day, in and out, and then not to mention, you know, when we have a, you know, our dog in the back seat, we can't throw him in the bed of a truck. You know what I mean? Like when we have our dog in the back seat with the baby, it's gonna get pretty tight back there. And then that's just with one baby and one dog. Taking things one step at a time, but I can just tell you already, even just with the one baby and the stuff that goes along with taking care of the baby and having a dog in the back seat and traveling a lot, it's gonna get to be a pain in the butt when your only option is a pickup truck and you have the back seat crammed full of stuff. And I know you can make stuff work, obviously it's not a big deal. Make day to day for her a little bit more difficult. And I know of course you can make things work and you don't have to have everything comfortable and I understand that, but me as a husband and me being able to do nice things for my wife when I can, I feel like I like to make sure that she's comfortable, as comfortable as she can be day to day with the stuff that she has going on, especially when it does come to her being 
the mother of my children. Like, I want her to be well taken care of and comfortable day to day because she helps me with a lot and I wanna make sure that in return she has a comfortable life and a comfortable thing to drive and stuff like that. That's just me. Not, you don't have to do that. Not everybody's the same, but that's just how I think about it and that's just what I do and what I try to make sure I do at all times. Like if I'm gonna have a vehicle, I'd rather her have a nice vehicle before I have a nice vehicle. Does that make sense? You're probably asking, what does this have to do with selling a blue truck? Well. If we're gonna get her a new vehicle, and that's the plan, you're probably gonna see on her channel if you watch her videos, we're gonna be looking at new vehicles, and I've already got a couple of things in mind. I don't know if it's gonna be a Cadillac Escalade, I don't know if it's gonna be a Yukon, I don't know if it's gonna be a Suburban, or a van, or an SRT Durango, I'm just throwing out hints, it doesn't mean anything, but my point is, if we get her a different vehicle, that's more of a family vehicle so that we can, you know, whether we have the back row folded down or whatever, we still can take the dog kennel with the dog in it, our luggage, we can have the baby and the dog separated, we can have, you know, comfortable seating and just a comfortable vehicle, but we still want something that can tow, you know, up to at least 5,000 pounds, and I think the Escalades and the SRT Durangos and stuff, I think they're rated for like over 8,500 pounds because we were gonna be getting a horse trailer. She has two horses and she wants to be able to, you know, haul her horses around. We want something that can still be a family vehicle. We can take the dog, we can take the, our baby or multiple, you know, as the next couple of years go on, you never know. But the point is we want it to be a comfortable situation. So what we're thinking is sell the blue truck. I will temporarily drive her truck. We'll get her a new vehicle and then what we do with her truck, I don't know. But here's the thing, I don't need to have two fourth gens. I hope you guys understand that. So if we get her another vehicle, we don't need two fourth gens. And I can tell you right now, I'd rather keep her truck than the blue truck only because the blue truck has 60,000 miles, which isn't a big deal, but her truck has only 8,000 miles on it. Big blue is up for sale right now. It's $36,000 or best offer for the truck with the 20 by 12 moto metals and newer Toyo MTs on it which are the wheels and tires right here that it came on. If you can see, the tread is really, really good. Wheels are newer. Or it's gonna be $33,000 if you want that truck on stocks, not the Moto Metals and 35 by 1250s. If there's anybody out there interested, cool. If not, it's already listed for sale. That's kind of the reasoning behind selling Big Blue. And hopefully you guys can understand that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was just a lot of chit chat, um, but you know, just some stuff I thought I would let you guys know. And I just, some stuff I thought I should fill you guys in on. Also, if you want this truck, last chance, last 24 hours. And if you're watching this on the 18th, you don't have 24 hours left. This is your last couple hours to enter to win this truck. Every $5 is 10 entries to win. Thank you guys so much. Enter while you can. This truck plus $5,000 could be yours. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.